Rangers one week and Celtic the next an extraordinary achievement really but they're not just here for the day out the pitch is at its worst on this side as you can probably see here's Leo Larson Lennon Agat will use his acquaintance with Lovering Hartson Guppy Lambert available Craney away by Hughes Steve Guppy is uh, still struggling with an ankle problem because they do have uh, Alan Thompson on the bench and he's back from a three match ban McGinley and Lennon keeping a check on things Here's Lambert, releasing Didier Agat. Agat looking unstoppable, it's gone out. Must have been close. Yeah, it must have been very tight. That all came from a slight pass from Marvin Wilson in the Celtic half of the pitch. He's cut out by Paul Lambert. All of a sudden they get Agat free on the right-hand side. And for the first time, it was almost to the byline there. It's a correct decision. But a warning there for Pereira that they can't afford to give the ball away cheaply. Well, Alan Thompson is going to be coming on shortly for Celtic because Steve Guppy is unable to continue after taking a knock on the ankle. What a shame for this lad. He's finally got a, a run in the team. But uh, Guppy hobbles off and on comes Alan Thompson. That's late for late. Celtic don't have to change the system. Thompson more than comfortable playing wide left. Could be uh, cursing his luck, really. Marvin Wilson. Brady. Took it down well. Sheeran. Lovering was well advanced again. Now Crab. Now take uh, one win away from clinching the title and one win away from reaching the Scottish Cup final. Almost half an hour gone at Hampden Park. And this is Bobo Barber, the formidable Frenchman. Thompson just on for the injured Guppy. last week they've done so well against Rangers in the first half but just before half time Flo scored and then just after half time they gave away a penalty thin line between success and failure one thing they can't afford to do is give away a cheap goal you know, they're putting in so much uh, work and they haven't do a lot of chasing here his hearts in though a bit of a burst from him oh Carson was waiting but it was pushed away and it's going to be a corner. Now, uh, vital touch by John Hughes because Craig Nelson's under this. Hartson does so well here to dig it out into the back post area, almost in the byline. And but for the, the touch by John Hughes, Hartson had a simple header. Stylian Petrov's corner. Brady held it up well as he usually does now Sheeran moving away from Agat and he's run it out it's 
check out some of the Sunday action for you. The Premiership Plus pay-per-view match is a cracker from Anfield. 0870516160 for details on how to see Liverpool against Chelsea from 1.30 tomorrow. And Super Sunday is a London derby. Fulham against Tottenham, hoping to pick up the pieces of their season. It's on Sky Sports 1 from 3 o'clock. Paul Lovering, a huge Celtic fan, he was sent off uh, when playing against them for Hibs once. And in the same game that uh, Frank Sozi also saw red. I think the occasion got to Paul though. Douglas will get to that cross. Whoops. <laughs> Can't win the surface for that, Rob. <laughs> One to smile about. week for Air United. Hampton Park fast becoming their new home. Oh, oh Hughes' error though has let in Alan Thompson. Now Larson and Hudson waiting in the middle. It's cut out by Duffy and it needed to be. Well I did his fellow defender a major turn there Neil Duffy by squeezing Thompson out because it was a terrible square pass from John Hughes that eventually led to Irving exposed on the left hand side there and they just can't afford to do that against the side of this quality Petrov delivers Hartson looking to get on the end of it but it was steered away by Craig, now Lennon Lambert, Thompson, inviting him to have a go, he does just that, Thompson trying to help it on, and it's good and keep his ball though, just. That is up. That's a good ball at the line by Stephen Craney, it lasts in his passive as the ball is played forward and that's why the flag stayed down, but immediately he turned to go for it, quite rightly, it was penalised. But a good ball at the left-hand side by Stephen Krenick. And a good example of his crisp, accurate passing. Two first division sides in the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup this season. And that hasn't happened since uh, 1938. Last time two teams from outside of the top flight made it to the last four. And uh, one of the teams in that year, East Five, actually went on to win the Cup. It's certainly going to be asking a lot of their United and Partick Thistle to follow suit but um, air are uh, doing okay at the moment that's for sure good ball it's released Robertson can he deliver can but Paul Lambert is waiting to receive and Thompson out of confuse Brady never wanted to give up Lively. Gordon Diel celebrated his 40th birthday uh, a week ago on the eve of the League Cup final. Thompson. were absolutely awesome at Motherwell on Tuesday night one of their best performances of the season and a performance achieved without the injured Sutton and Bahara and uh, Boulder and Lennon on that night they haven't quite uh, been able to find the same rhythm today though against an Air United side who are refusing to budge or give them an inch Petrov Lennon Looking for Hartson. Okay. I think John Hughes felt that John Hartson was leading with his left arm here, but he's up well, Hartson. Comes blind side of John Hughes. And he's in an area that's close enough that he can score from here. I don't think John Hughes 
there's any case for complaint there but it's a good contest and one that uh, John Hughes won't back off Receiving it. Yeah, it takes Stephen Crane's full weight here. Stephen Crane, I think, trying to play the ball, but uh, Lovering just too quick from there. Lovering, a big Celtic fan, it's uh, a dream date for him. Taking on his heroes, really. I think this is the kind of situation that you'll have to make the, the most of set pieces around the Celtic goal try and get a decent ball into the box and you know however much physique and height Celtic have in that, that box the quality of the ball in is good enough yeah, you, you, you can put anyone under pressure and Paul Sheeran is the man for the free kicks normally Sheeran delivers and Douglas not very convincing it fell to Hughes Robertson, not the greatest delivery, but uh, Sheeran and McGinley looking to combine. Rubbering back on. Ooh, it's into the side netting. Well, he's really got to pull it back. Plenty of yellow jerseys in that box here. He's got to come back across the face of goal. Once again, good bit of possession here by Ertig at Lovering down the left-hand side. Three jerseys, three yellow jerseys on the edge of the six-yard box. Had it come across the, the face of goal. Previous to that, I think Rab Douglas gave Bobo Balde a shout here. Balde backed off this. And Rab Douglas was hardly convincing. And but now, here's Lennon. Balde. Craney. Down by Larson for Thompson. Here's Gordon Diel with uh, the air chairman, Bill Barr, responsible of course for many a football stadium. He actually uh, is not an interfering chairman. His medical condition means that he gets a better view of things down there on the touchline and that's why he stands alongside his manager. I can't think of too many managers who would like their chairman alongside of mind you. They're very close. Well, I've just gotten a chance to get in his ear about the money they've made from this cup win. <laughs> Might get a few quid from this. Here's Hartson. Mialbi. Feeling a deja vu, really. Uh, no goals. Similar to the League Cup final last week when Air held Rangers until just before half time. I'm not convinced that uh, Gordon Diel thought his team would hold out for the first half this week. But they're doing more than that. It's Brady closing in. Oh, and it's going to come through to McKinley. And well, Lambert took the sting out of it. Uh, Paul Lambert did ever so well, but terrific play by James Grady down the left-hand side here. Presses Neil Lennon, gets possession, needs help here, but holds it up until that help arrives. Picks his pass inside. And but for a terrific block there by Paul Lambert. Rob Douglas might have been stretched there. Here's Craney. Celtic trying to raise the stakes. Bit of space on the edge of the area for Henrik Larsson. Across it goes to Didier Agat. Skips past his man. It's going to come to Lennon. Craney. In towards Hartson. Agat was waiting for the fallout. But Craig Nelson will take the cross. I think it took a nick off Paul Lovering, that's why it set up so well for Nelson. Valdo wary of uh, Grady's presence, or is he? Grady's got in! Oh! Very nearly a Scottish Cup shot. Yeah, lack of communication there. 
between Baldur and his goalkeeper and Grady who has given nothing up this afternoon as usual he's giving his heart and soul to this game anticipate it and he almost gets his reward there he's a yard out of luck oh well that would have been some moment for James Grady who himself is a, a Celtic fan John Hughes Once again it's been a superhuman effort from Air United against the old firm That was a painful one to, to lose a goal right on the stroke of half time last week Gordon Dale at the moment will be looking at that clock and thinking he's got a chance of getting in with a 0-0 at least Here is Didier Gap going to be a corner, he, uh, he was saying that he looked at the clock last week and it said 41 minutes and he thought yeah. we're doing quite well here, we're going to let it go then. We're going to have a corner to defend now. Which Thompson will come across and take, I suspect. Is it going to happen again to Air United just before half-time? Are they going to concede? Thompson sends it in. Uh, miscued somewhat by Petrov and it will be taken by Nelson Hughes too high for Grady not that it has to be too high as far as uh, he's concerned but once again he's been a, a willing worker as he always was in his Dundee days when we used to see him play Thompson Crowded out by Lovering and Wilson initially. McGinley turned into trouble in the shape of Stylian Petrov and then hold him down. And well, Stuart Dibble produced a card here. Petrov was certainly on his way, making into a good position. Sure they was going to have a word, but I think the card is going to stay in the pocket. The final warning. For McGinley, Alan Thompson, certainly not afraid to have a go from here, despite the distance. The delivery is more likely though from Thompson, but it's straight out from Duffy. And there have got a man down in their own box. Hughes, but he's up now and doesn't matter anyway because Brady sniffing again. Ooh, there's uh, a problem here for Celtic and Douglas beats away the shot from Sheeran and Lennon is on hand to mop up. Well they got possession through the willingness to press the ball down the left hand side here United. Forcing Celtic into giving up possession and eventually Sheeran in a position to test Rob Douglas. And it was hardly one the Celtic goalkeeper keeper could uh, try and catch the quite happily just getting the, the hands behind it and getting it away. There's Duffy and Arkson closing in on him. Just one minute of added on time in this first half. It's been another excellent effort from Air. Chasing, of course. Oh, Mialbi might have shown too much of that to Sheeran. Mialbi's hurt himself as Brady picked it up. Now Sheeran. Um, nothing on the shot, really. From, uh, 
I think they've been better trying to pick out Pat McGinley there who've gone beyond them and it does fall to Scott Crabb and watch McGinley going beyond here as the ball comes to Crabb, McGinley's on his way just out of vision on the right hand side there he'd gone beyond it's going to take something special to score from there well it's half time and Air United are doing themselves proud at the home of Scottish football and James Grady a Celtic fan nearly put them in front We'll hear what Charlie Nicholas thinks of it in a moment with Jim. Half time in this semi final at Hampton Park. A United nil, Celtic nil. Celtic bidding to reach their 50th Scottish Cup final. This is their 65th semi final. A United playing in only their third semi. The previous two, they lost to Rangers each time. 2 0 back in 1973 and 7 0 just a couple of years ago. But. Uh, they have held their own and in fact might have been ahead against Saudi but right at the start of the second half Larson was lurking well, once again good anticipation from Larson here for the second ball route one Hartson at his very best here Larson running across the face doesn't really get it another good example of the understanding that Henrik Larson and John Hartson are developing but they will know Ian that uh, they've got a game in their hands tonight they know that Ayr haven't come here to roll over and you have to see in the evidence of that first half that Ayr have given Celtic more problems than they would normally encounter in the SPL most Saturdays indeed and they're looking to do that again with Sheeran up towards Grady away by Mialbi though who had a distinct height advantage over Grady McGinley's cross and Douglas takes but, uh, Boys from the first division really have done themselves proud here at Hampton Park again. Thompson, first half replacement for the injured Guppy. Thompson's cross, Larson's header. Wide. Right. Well, the alarm bell must be ringing for Golden Dale. It's the first time Celtic have got a decent ball across the face of goal. And the one man you don't want unmarked in this position is Henrik Larson. And he's almost totally unmarked the real chance well you can see from his reaction uh, what he thinks of it Celtic upping the ante at the start of the second half I'm sure Martin O'Neill would have had a few words to say to them during the interval along with John Robertson and Stevie Wolfe and his coaches route to the semi-finals has been a fairly comfortable one they took care of Alawa, Kilmarnock and Aberdeen but there United are providing their toughest test perhaps Craig's free kick just flipped away by Balder Thompson and Robertson together Celtic can't really dig it out at the moment, here's Crab. Douglas thought about coming, and Balder did the business for Celtic, and it's a throw. John Hughes will take it. 37 now. Perhaps McLeish let him go from Hibbs. And ooh, McGinley was waiting there, had me Albi not cleared as Brady screwed it goalwards. Larson though with a knockdown for Hartson. Support arriving from Didier Gatt. Lambert, Petrov, Thompson wants it and he's going to get it. Alan Thompson with time to deliver. Away by Craig though. And then by Wilson, but here's Lennon. Did he air gap? Typical of Gats. Oh, yes! It had to be Henrik. Celtic are in front, but they've had to work for it. That's for sure. But Henrik Larson loves scoring at this stadium.
that's one of the few occasions they haven't managed to, to double up here. It's a gap left one on one with Lovering. He's just too quick for them. They could have played it early, decided to take it on. Needs a runner. Look at Larson. That's wonderful striking. Times the run from the back post to the front to absolute perfection, and there was nothing Craig Nelson could do. The gap did well to stay composed and pick him out. And it's the first time that they have had no protection in behind Paul Lovren. Well, it's his tenth goal in his last six visits to the National Stadium. But then he kind of scores everywhere he goes. Henry Larson's 32nd of the season and Celtic in front early in the second half so well here to hold the ball in here Baldy well positioned goal side and he needs support here James Grady eventually Rob Douglas wasn't threatened but Grady did well to hold it in Sheeran here's Hughes by Grady and here he is again deserves some reward for his efforts this afternoon or evening away by Mialbi Larson looking to get away again he's already had a look up to see where Hartson was Agat arriving too in support Larson strokes it through for Agat Hartson waiting in the middle but it was cut out by David Gray and a gap to mull over the corner and it be a direct delivery Alan Thompson who enjoyed great FA Cup success with Bolton Wanderers in England pulled off a few shots in his time with them Lennon Thompson he might go for goal he does and it banks its way through to Nelson and the space opened up nicely for Alan Thompson but again didn't really get a hold of it and you fancy him in this position to test Craig Nelson Scene. Now Neil Lennon, Lambert. Some intricate passing from Celtic. Larson's little flip. Free kick is it for McGinley's 
challenge by the referee let Celtic get on with it and Nelson was in there again but Nelson took it bouncing ball for Craney and Grady once again being a pest it's uh, certainly not away yet Scott Crabb Anderson is at centre nobody really on the far post but uh, Didier Gatt wasn't too aware of the situation Brady's been bright and busy for Air United all game well, that's been terrific even more so when you consider that uh, he's given away a few stone against Bobo Balder the delay as uh, Air prepared to take this corner Crab is going to send it in Crab's corner away by Balba you know, once again it was Henrik Larsson who provided the, the touch when Celtic most needed it terrific example of a Gats pace and it, it bought the luxury of having the time to look up and, and pick out Larson who'd made the front post run and so many times this season we see him getting across defenders it's a fraction of a yard they needed and it's made all the difference Larson's 16th goal in 17 Scottish Cup ties he does have a habit of scoring at Hamden Scoring a plenty. Robertson. Grady. McGinley. Blocked by Mialbi. Stylian Petrov. Uh, impeded by Marvin Wilson, who uh, once scored a winning goal against Celtic in a League Cup tie for Airdrie. The first card of the game is going to go Wilson's way. Yeah, and if, if he'll do win this, it means he's out of the final, and I think I'm right saying that uh, he's just one yellow away from from the suspension, or missing the next game, which would be either the replay of the final. And whoever keen Air are to get back into this, I don't think they can go chasing it, they're liable to lose a second one, they've got to try and stay compact. Yes, Marvin Wilson would be out of the final, so would uh, Ludwig Mirabczyk if he came on and got a yellow card, by the way. The only other Celtic man who would have been in danger in that respect, Chris Sutton, uh, but he's injured, of course. Didier Gap might have been, but they lost the paperwork surrounding his uh, booking at Aberdeen in the quarterfinals, so the yellow card didn't stand. And much to uh, Didier's relief, I'm sure. Then to Larson, who has made the difference once again for Celtic with considerable assistance from Agat. After their uh, wonderful week taking on the old firm, Air United will uh, return to planet Earth on Tuesday night. They have a home game in the first division against Arbroath. And I know that they've uh, slashed prices for that one as a thank you to their fans who have followed them on this uh, remarkable cup route. They're taking off for Lovering. I don't think Gordon Diel would be surprised, particularly that it was Larson who, who did the damage either. And he, he was in our studio, of course, at Club Park, and he, he said to me today that. Uh, no, he, he watched Larson in particular, and he said his movement was was unbelievable, and, and the work rate, and the energy that he puts into his game. And there's so much more to this lad than, than putting the ball in the back of the net. He's so unselfish, and he gives his lot. Still the one goal in it, though. Still a bit of hope for Gordon Diel, who 
scored for Rafe Rovers when they beat Celtic in the 1994 League Cup final. Actually played in two Scottish Cup finals for Rangers and lost both of them to Aberdeen. Craney looking for Larson, but uh, Craig got enough on it. Duffy. Crab. Comes off Mialbi. We'll be going to the World Cup in the summer with Sweden and we'll be up against England. In fact, the throw-in has gone his way. Almost an hour played in this tenant Scottish Cup semi-final at Hampden Park and Henrik Larsson's goal separating the sides. But there United have excelled again, really. Though a lot of their players do have experience of playing at the highest level in Scotland. Nine of the starting eleven have played in the top league. It's crap. Well, United are biting back a bit. It's Sheeran. Been trapped by Lambert. Here is Sheeran, who's waiting with nine goals this season, some of them real stunners as well. Paul Lovering has to settle for another throw. Sheeran. It's disappearing over Robert Douglas's bar. Douglas has only conceded one goal in the last seven games, so that is the size of the task facing Air United. I just wonder how many first division sides you'd expect to have an equal share of the ball against Celtic, and that's what we, we see there. And they're still in it. Hughes' header. Robertson, Grady, McGinley, a cross into the path of Paul Lovering, first touch didn't really do many favours, although having said that he managed to deliver, and it was another chance for air. Well it's the two wing backs, well, that gives you an example of, of you know just uh, how much air are prepared to take the game to Celtic, Lovering hangs it up. Robertson does so well to get above Neil Lennon, just can't get up high enough to, to get the header down. But Gordon Dale will be well encouraged by the sight of his two wing-backs getting forward into those areas. Wing had uh, something to say to Didier Agat. He's, uh temperament over the years has let him down sometimes Paul Lovering but uh, very much part of his game Lambert's free kick Shearing McGinley now his crowd the flag is up though well, was it really? He knows he's in a good position there, he's wide, he's looking across at the last defender. You know, half a yard at most, it's very tight. Scott Crabb was in the Falkirk side that beat Celtic in a semi-final five years ago, so was keeper Nelson. Petrov. And Air United are certainly keeping this Scottish Cup semi-final going. They are by no means giving in yet to the might of Celtic, the triple winners last season. They uh, have disposed of most teams this season, Celtic. They might do the same to Air United, but it's 
not been as straightforward as many expected. Didier Agat. Paul Lambert. Hartson. Hartson battling with Duffy. Larson waiting in the middle. Put out by Hughes. Celtic fans eager for a second goal so they can start uh, their celebrations there'll be plenty of celebrations this season you suspect with the championship just a victory away We're due to clinch that you would imagine in the first week of April in the first games after the split in the league Brady couldn't find Shearer in that time and there could be in trouble here as Didier a gap burst away and again perhaps not well, I don't think the pitch helped David Craig here as he tried to pick out Lovering on the left hand side For today, Celtic had scored uh, nine goals in the Scottish Cup and had nine different scorers, would you believe? But Henry Glasson has changed that, his second in the competition. Petrov, Lennon. Craney up towards Larson. Air are considering bringing on their top scorer Eddie Allen shortly. Then Hartson. Johan Mialbi. Yeah, we've been allowed to go. Lambert tucks it through, looking for Larson. And uh, it's gone for the corner. That's Craig. Is it just a uh, throw in, in fact? No, it is a corner, I believe. Meanwhile, Air United are making a change. Scott Crabb coming off. And on comes Eddie Allen, 19 goals this season. Allen played up front at Dundee with Grady. Yeah, he's maybe short of just a little bit of fitness. Scott Crabb hasn't played over the last couple of weeks. His training's been restricted as well. And this is a more than useful replacement for him. Larson and Hartson waiting for Thompson's cross. They might have to wait a bit more for a Gats cross. In the end, nobody gets across it. Lovering. He gets the throw ultimately. A quarter of the game remaining. Celtic lost 2 1 to Rangers here in the semi finals of the League Cup, thus ending Martin O'Neill's hopes of back to back trebles of last season's achievement in winning the treble was extraordinary only Jock Steen had done it before for Celtic some footsteps to follow in plenty of premiership action for you tomorrow as usual the premiership plus pay-per-view game is from Anfield, should be some contest that. Liverpool against Chelsea, 08705 160 160. The information on how to see it. And our Super Sunday offering is a London derby as Spurs trying to get their act together. They're at Fulham and Sky Sports 1 from 3. Here at Hampton Park tomorrow, it's the second semi final as Rangers take on the first division leaders, Partick Thistle.
feet of uh, Scottish Premier League clubs have fallen by the wayside at the hands of Ayr and Partick this season both worthy of their place in the semi-finals and just on oh Balder didn't clear it and it came off the bar from Grady oh you wouldn't have grossed him it would you given his shift tonight and himself so perfectly for him Splat clearance by Balder Annan did well to get in in the first place and he must have thought he had scored but if they're looking for encouragement hope that they're still right in this game well, Brady would have liked nothing better than two stick on passes and pal Robert Douglas the two of them have been winding each other up all week about this game and they play together at Dundee Brady's in there again and lovering on the volley well a crouching lower and James Grady gets his reward for what has been a, a terrific performance so far tonight two players by Balder Rob Douglas didn't know much about it I have to say that uh, I've seen him at Dundee I was a little bit surprised that he dropped out of the top flight James Grady yeah I would go along with that certainly good enough to be in it the other question you have to ask on the back of this performance Ian, and indeed the, the first half performance against Rangers last week is why Ayr aren't contesting that first division title <laughs> Yeah, they ask that question a lot in there, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Gordon Dale was getting a bit of stick earlier in the season for not being uh, right up at the top. Larson is going to go for it. Nelson uh, might have had that covered. Well, maybe he did anyway. Yeah, they took the time to come out and press him. I think it's Paul Sheeran who steps out eventually to try to get to Larson. It was uh, Paul Sheeran. You can't afford to give Larson too much space in these areas. Well, it's pretty close as far as goal attempts are concerned. And uh, Air United might feel they, uh, well, certainly out of their two trips to Hamilton this week, deserve something out of the games. Douglas's clearance nearly goes to McGinley now Robertson nicely done by Stylian Petrov the Bulgarian international who's already captained his country even though he's only 22 here's Craney who's just 20 by Balder, Neil Lennon, Johan Mielby, Agat. Oh, Petrov, there he go, to John Hartson now. And Duffy having to poke it away for a corner. come up predictably up. Petrov sends it in a gap might get a second chance does and it's snuffed out by Duffy I think it was happy, happy when it brought back to him on his right side the second time You've just got to keep the concentration. They know that uh, if they lose a second one, it's, it's probably gone. It's got to hang in there. It's the left foot of Thompson to deliver. Hartson trying to gate crash. 
but air with Marvin Wilson looking to go on the break Robertson Sheeran Robertson again who returned to air after a short spell in English football with Oxford United Neil Lennon who has been troubled by a knee injury that's why he missed the match at Motherwell on Saturday and is uh, also going to sit out Northern Ireland's friendly against Liechtenstein I bet he always wanted to play against them as well Duffy Hughes Well, a quarter of an hour to go and still just Henrik Larsson's goal in it Stylian Petrov Neil Lennon in towards Hartson here's Larsson oh he slipped it through to a gap So well held up by Larson there until I got around the outside. Here's Neil Lennon. Thompson now. Larson. Petrov. Hartson. Celtic taking the long way around, but uh, more than capable of getting there in the end. It's Didier Gap, and he's uh, sliced that one. I don't think I've ever seen anyone quicker from a standing start than this fellow. Quite remarkable. And he doesn't have to get up ahead of steam, it's from a standing start. Not bad for 50 grand, which is what he cost. He was on a short-term contract at Hibs. Oh, James Grady. Grady. But it's stopped by his uh, panel Douglas. There's a flag up. Well, what Gordon Diel would give for an equaliser and for a replay? That would uh, certainly be against all odds, really. But it might happen here with Grady snapshot beaten away by Douglas. Oh, Gordon Diel on the touchline couldn't believe it. Terrific reflex stop from Robert Douglas. And it was hardly an easy one to take first time. What a good effort by James Grady. Pass is going to get a free kick, but uh, that must have stunned the palms of Douglas and a vital save, one of many this season from the Celtic keeper. Well, this isn't easy to take. It's on the half volley. He has to take it early. And Mark Douglas does well. Nearly, Gordon, nearly. What was he saying then? <laughs> Alan Thompson's free kick for Selfie. Nelson's come for it. And Hartson fouled him. I think Nelson was hardly convincing the read. been in existence for 92 years their first ever cup final came here last week against Rangers in the League Cup and they weren't disgraced then the 4-0 scoreline perhaps a little harsh on them in the end they certainly haven't been disgraced today nowhere near it Brainy. Away by Duffy. Neil Lennon. Wilson. 
just getting back on his feet. Just over 10 minutes to go. Here is Didier again. Hartson. Neil Lennon. A job. A gap. Celtic trying to close in. Here's Craney. Look to nudge it through here to Lambert. And Larson is waiting for post. Just bounced behind. Hartson. Lovely little dink in there by Stephen Kearney to get Lambert away. Free kick to the end again. Obstructed by Shearing. Just look a little bit leggy at the moment here, a little bit tired. What a performance they've given though. Thompson standing over the free kick. Is he going to float one in or is he going to go for goal? Thompson, it goes for goal! Oh! And he finds it in spectacular style! Alan Thompson has sealed Celtic's place in the Scottish Cup final. I don't think you'll see a better free kick, Ian, and you know, goalkeepers don't save these. Nothing the keeper can do there. Tucked high into the top corner. Look at the movement and the action he gets on the ball. Cases on it, it's all there. Typical Alan Thompson effort. And one that should get Celtic over the finishing line now. Not much Nelson can do about that one. Thompson clinically claims Celtic's second. On his return from a three-match ban. Made an earlier than expected introduction to this game from the bench after Steve Guppy turned an ankle in the first half. But Thompson's lethal left foot has surely decided it or has it still air refused to give up and Wilson rather crudely taken out that could be a card for Thompson yeah it's still doing producing the yellow immediately having Wilson going to cross Thompson and again I think the Celtic midfielder can't have any argument against that and if they have to get back into this, they need one quickly. Well, they are going to bring on a former Celtic man, Brian McLaughlin, who uh, nearly scored against Rangers last week with a delightful chip in the League Cup final. It's Marvin Wilson who makes way. McLaughlin started his career at Celtic, played over 80 times for them. Uh, joined them from school, actually. Actually won the... Scottish Cup in 95 with Celtic. Celtic in turn are considering bringing on Jackie McNamara, but it's a free kick and that means Paul Sheeran to deliver for air. McLaughlin gets his first touch. And Lovering's got time to deliver here. And he sends a beauty in, but it's away by Valver. John Hughes still forward. And now Sheeran tries to bustle his way through. And in the end, it was sliced somewhat by Grady, who's been excellent this afternoon for air. Uh, he's been terrific. I think it says a lot of Gordon Dale that uh, you know, he's, he's given Brian McLaughlin what remains of the game for, for Marvin Wilson. He's going to continue to have a go at uh, Celtic. And I think if half the teams in that SPL showed the conviction that Gordon Dale's side have shown tonight that they were far more competitive Premier League. Well, Stilian Petrov appears to have a bit of a knock. He's going to be replaced by Jackie McNamara, whose last goal came on this ground in the Scottish Cup final last season. Also scored in the semi-final, if I remember, against Dundee United. But uh, he's hobbling a little bit, Petrov. And 
that Camara will come on to the closing stages. Yeah, I don't think there's any point in Martin O'Neill taking risks, important games lying ahead. And he knows that this particular job's just about done. Larson looking to latch onto this. It's away by Lovering. Oops. And then let it go. Celtic still haven't considered a goal in the competition this season. I'm sure uh, many neutrals watching would feel that they're united for their excellent efforts in their games at Hampden Park this season. Maybe deserve to nick one. Lambert's free kick. Hartson knocks it on. Away by Craig. Didier again. Celtic coming through to their second successive Scottish Cup final. Last time they won the trophy back to back, 88 and 89. It's uh, been a while. But they'll be returning here at the beginning of May on a newly relayed pitch, thankfully. McGinley, not going to send this through. It's going to be a corner. Robertson hasn't given much up tonight either. And on the air, going to get a goal. Up in the former Celt will take this corner and again these header veers away from its intended target and Celtic are nearly there. Yeah, it's going to do well to score here from hopefully 16 yards. Who's your man of the match? Well, I think if you consider that uh, you know that. Celtic's back line is a meanest in, in the SPL. I think Jim, James Gray's performance tonight has been remarkable. And he's been up there on his own at times, he's held the ball in well, he's taken it in well, allowed others to go forward in support. And he's presented a, a real cutting edge for, for here tonight. And with a bit more luck, would have had himself a goal. He's my tenant's man of the match. Thompson sends it through. Oh, Hudson! And Craig Nelson foils the big man. That's a good save. You can see Craig Nelson. I mean, I think he knows the lads in front of him are, are tired now. I think it would be an injustice if they were to lose another two or three. A gat, cracking cross. And it's admirably defended by Hughes. Neil Lennon. Thompson, whose fabulous free kick has confirmed another cup final appearance for Celtic. Larson threads it through. Hartson. <laughs> He's not meant to score this week, is he? Hartson. He is Thompson going for goal. Oh! He's done it again. Another glorious goal for Alan Thompson. How about that for putting the seal on it? Yeah, there aren't many who strike it better than Danny Mee once he's on that left side. I think we'll see there's a lot of action in this one as well. Inside of the left foot, and he must move that four or five feet from left to right. Craig Nelson was never getting there. And it puts a, a very comfortable face on the scoreline. Well, he has been touted for uh, a possible England call up, Alan Thompson. Certainly has a fine left foot as he has proved tonight but it's been a plucky performance from Air United a 
maybe Celtic fancy another one. Well, Celtic got there in the end, they usually do. But uh, ooh, Larson's let that go. Lambert, Larson. Larson's <laughs> desperate to get a goal this week. He's not had much luck at Motherwell or in Hamden today. Craig missed it, Larson, will he try and set one up for Hartson? He will, but it's going to be smothered by Nelson after Hughes challenged Hartson. I think uh, Air United are on their last legs, but what a supreme effort they have uh, produced here. Yeah, I think if you offer Gordon Dale the, the full-time whistle now, he would, he would take it off you. And he knows his lads haven't deserved it going over tonight. The 90 minutes are up. And no added on time. Martin O'Neill and Celtic are through to the Scottish Cup final. But Gordon Diel and Air United can take heart from a magnificent performance. Not only this week against Celtic, but also last week against Rangers. They have certainly done themselves proud. Very proud. Trust Hendrik Larsson though to make the difference. He passed early in the second half. And then Alan Thompson, a first half replacement for the injured Steve Guppy, banged in two beauties, including a fabulous free kick. Celtic did what they were expected to do in the end. They got through to their 50th Scottish Cup final. There could be an old firm final as well if Rangers keep their side of the bargain tomorrow against Cardiff Thistle. But in some ways, it's about Air United today. They say that nobody ever remembers semi-final losers but I think that Air United might just be remembered today by their faithful followers who have returned to Hampden for the second week running they did themselves proud they did themselves justice James Brady the man of the match and he has Neil Lennon's shirt it has been another memorable day out at Hampton Park for the first division side Air United an extraordinary achievement really in reaching the League Cup final and in reaching the Scottish Cup semi-final and in accounting for four Scottish Premier League clubs along the way but uh, perhaps unsurprisingly the old firm proved to be too much of a hurdle to jump this tenants Scottish Cup semi-final at Hampden Park ends a United nil, Celtic three. Yeah. Henrik, was that harder than you expected? Uh, no, not really. You know, it's going to be tough. I mean, it's a semi-final of a cup game. Uh, they just came back from last week when they got defeated in the, in the CS Cup final. So, you knew it was going to be hard, but we made it a lot tougher for ourselves today as well. How difficult was the pitch? Oh, the pitch, as uh, we all know, is... Uh, it's uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't know how harsh I want to be here, but it's a, it's a really mess. Uh, I think it's a it's a it's a shame because I mean it's Scotland's national arena. It should be better. Alan, do you hope, given that you've got quite a nasty uh, graze on your thigh, that you'll uh, get a better pitch for the final? Yeah, it's disappointing to have such a nice uh, setup for a game like a semi-final of the cup, and uh, for the pitch to be in a bit of a mess spoils it really for both sets of players. Uh, but it's the same for both teams, but. Uh, I wouldn't say we're uh, happy with the way we played, but uh, we're just delighted with the outcome. Did Martin O'Neill have a go at the players at halftime? He just said, uh, when we come in after 90 minutes, just make sure we're either we either have a replay or we're uh, in the hat for the while well, we're in the final. <laughs> <laughs> you are indeed, um, Hendrik. How important was the timing of your goal, given that Air United had finished the first half so strongly? No, it's always important to get the first goal, um, and yeah, coming straight after the break uh, is always good. But then, um, yeah, it was a great free kick from, from Tomo, and uh, with 2-0 it was uh, finished. But that time, Alan, when you scored that free kick, did you feel as though the air's legs were going? Uh, not really, because it kept pushing forward second half, and I think it 1-1. Uh, they hit the ball, you know, and if, uh, if that goes in, you know, the tails are up. Um, but fair play to air, you know, they, uh, they worked hard, and uh, I think above that they played well. Your first goal was pretty decent, the second was a, an absolute cracker. Is that in your all-time top three? Um, 
don't know, I've got a few, so uh, I'll have to look back on them. <laughs> You're going to miss out of what could be the title clincher because of suspension. How much of a disappointment is that for you? Yeah, it's disappointing. Uh, I've just done three game ban in the league, so I have, I've got one more uh, league game to uh, to do. But uh, I did not feel like I hadn't played for a few weeks out there today as well. And Henrik, finally, the Glasgow derby for the cup final. Happy, um, happy to choose a team for the uh, the opponent for the final. What? Which team? Rangers or Thistle? Would you like to play in the final? Oh man. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not really too bothered. As long as you're there. Fellas, thanks. Cheers. Thank you very much. Martin, are you more pleased or relieved to be through after that? A bit of both, to be perfectly honest. I thought they were excellent on the evening. Uh, it's alright turning around saying they had nothing to lose, but even so, they pl applied themselves terrifically, especially second half. And uh, I was delighted to get out of it, delighted to have won the game. But we knew beforehand anyway, because they had played so well first half against Rangers uh, last week and uh, the cup exploits this season speak for themselves. It was a great run and uh, and they deserve all the accolades tonight. I think often when small teams do come to this type of uh, venue, this type of stage of a, of a tournament, we, we can be accused of patronising them, but they did play extraordinarily well, didn't they? Well, I think that, that, that is the problem and that is, that is the worry. It's, uh, it's easy for me to be patronising and sycophantic now mm. at this stage, but they played it uh, very, very well indeed. And a little bit of luck after we got the lead uh, in the second half, whatever luck was going was going in our direction for the next five or ten minutes. The one that um, that we dealt badly with uh, came in, um, we didn't stop the cross, then Bobo got it caught under his feet and hit the bar. That could have gone in, different game, one each. They certainly didn't deserve to be beaten 3-0. Did you have some harsh words for the players at halftime? No, the players know themselves. Um, uh, they've been, I mean, amazingly brilliant for the last two years. And the performances, generally speaking, have been of a high standard. Uh, and I, I think there's possibly the feeling that we just could step onto the field and take over that, that way we did against Motherwell a, a few days ago. It's not going to be the case. Uh, the pitch is poor, but it's poor for both teams. And um, you have to earn the right to pass the ball around the field. At times in the first half, I thought we passed it without uh, without actually going anywhere. And we had maybe about six passes where we, we could have maybe pushed up a wee bit further. Second half, we wanted, uh, because of the state of the pitch, we wanted to uh, play around John Hartson a little bit more. And we had a number of opportunities to do that. Just get players, get uh, midfield players a wee bit more advanced. And um, that was okay. It turned out all right. I mean, uh, never, never know about these plans, these type of things. But at the end of the day, we've, we've won. We've r ridden our luck. And I'm delighted we're in the final. It's not often you get a chance to ride your luck. You've not really required much of it there, certainly in the, the second half of the season, have you? No, that's that's right. I mean, there's, um, eventually three great goals have uh, decided the outcome of the game. Uh, Alan Thompson's two strikes were spectacular, and Henrik Larsson getting to the near post when Didier Gant has done brilliantly. Um, so, I'm naturally I'm delighted. I'm delighted to have won the game. Delighted that we are in the final now, and uh, you can put that to the back of the minds and uh, obviously concentrate on trying to win the league. But uh, tonight, tonight, if there's going to be a winner, it was Air United. Steve Guppy's substitution turned out to be lucky because of uh, Alan Thompson's contribution to the game. Did his uh, his, so his injured ankle have anything to do with it, the quality of the pitch? Well, uh, that I couldn't tell you, to be perfectly honest. But uh, Stevie Guppy had done fine in the last three games. Alan was, uh, is going to be missing again for another game. And in terms of continuity, Alan's had a terrific time. And uh, I think he's going to prove himself again with two magnificent goals. But um, it's been a, a long time out, you know, four games or whatever the case may be. And uh, uh, Stevie had, had taken his chance while Alan was out of the side and done fine. But uh, Thompson showed the quality that, uh, that he most certainly possesses. Bertie Volks today suggested that he'll start the game against France with Stephen Craney in the lineup. How do you feel about the timing of that so soon into his first team career? Well, that's really up to uh, the Scotland manager, whatever he wants to do. I mean, that's, um, nobody else can any, have any say in that. But uh, Stephen Craney has had uh, a meteoric rise in the last few weeks, you know. But as he knows himself, he's still got plenty to do. Martin, thank you. Thank you very much. James, I hardly know what to say to you after that. Can you sum up the emotions uh, after that defeat? Uh, drained. I think it's disappointing to get beat 3 nothing. I don't think there was three goals in the game. I think we've had as many chances as Celtic. OK, they've took theirs. We haven't, so very disappointed. How do you think the game was lost? Uh, I think they had just better players on the day. I think... We've we've had chances, not took them. They've had chances and they've took them. So that's where it was won and lost. Was there much the defence could have done about Larson's goal? Much that, uh, if anything, could have been done about Alan Thompson's goal? 
Possibly the first one we could have cut the cross out, but uh, the second and third ones are unstoppable. I don't think he'll score many better than them. Do you feel as though that you would have expected to get so many chances against Celtic? Not at all, not after watching them on Wednesday, but the boys just thought, why not? Why go out and have any regret regrets after the game? Just go out and give it your best shot. You personally had a couple of cracking efforts. Do you feel desperately unlucky and let down by fate not to have uh, beaten your old mate uh, Robert Douglas? It would have been good to beat him, I think, but he's had uh, a few good saves, tipped one onto the bar and... I don't know how he got the second one, but fair play to him. He'll remind me of them tonight. <laughs> Sum up what the last few weeks have been like in the, the two cup runs, what it's been like being an air player. It's been very good, and I think uh, nobody expected us to get this far in any of the competitions. So it's been good for the town, and the town's been buzzing for the, the past two weeks. And hopefully we can go on a wee run to the end of the season, just keep on winning. And Davy Proven and Ian Crocker in, in commentary were wondering, and it's a fair point, why does this team not do better in the first division? Well, if we could pinpoint that ourselves, we'd be in the top of the league, so we don't know. <laughs> Fair enough answer. Here's a large bottle of champagne. You're the tenants. Man of the match. Thanks. Well Thanks done, Jim. Cheers. Cheers. Gordon, do you feel proud of your players after that? Yeah, I can't ask for any more than that. I thought, um, for the first whistle tonight, I thought we were excellent. Um, I thought our attitude was brilliant. I thought some of our football was great. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm a proud manager tonight because I thought my players were different class. No doubt about that. It's a remarkable statistic, but up until the hour mark and perhaps beyond that, it was 50-50 in terms of possession. How do you feel when you hear that? Yeah, it was good. I thought we created a lot of chances tonight. Um, and I thought the only disappointing thing about the whole you know, 90 minutes was a f we deserved a goal. There's no yeah. doubt about that. And I don't think uh, there were three goals in it. But when you switch off against a quality side, which we've done for Larson's first goal, they punish you because they've got a lot of good quality on their side. And Thompson's goal, you, you've got to give credit to him. It's a fantastic strike. But um, I'm more concerned about my players and... Uh, you know, Martin O'Neill stood at the end of the tunnel there and shook everyone their hand, and that says a lot about him. So, I've got a lot to be proud of. What have the last few weeks been like, and how much has the team grown over the the period when you've been doing so well in both cup competitions? Yeah, it's been great. I must admit, it was uh, it was a great buzz again getting up at the hotel and coming back up um, to play Celtic after six days playing in a final against Rangers. So it's a fairy tale. The cup's been excellent for us, and I hope the loyal supporters that came and backed us once again. I hope they're away down the road proud. Because uh, I'm certainly proud of my players. Do you feel as though you can perhaps use the the season's magnificent achievements as a platform and something to build on for the the league next season? Yeah, we try and build on every year. Um, there's no doubt about that. So um, we'll try to do that, and we'll look forward to our next season campaign again. And life begins at 40, therefore. Certainly tonight, old. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the night. Thank you.